Hey you guys, welcome to my channel. This is actually my second attempt filming this video. I filmed a whole video and then I went to go edit it and the quality was complete garbage. I don't know what it is about my Sony. Like sometimes it's garbage and then sometimes it's the best quality I've ever seen. It's so unreliable. Back to my Canon G7X Mark III. This is a great camera and I love it. It's reliable. That's my cat's bell, but let's just get right into it because so, I'm somebody that has dry skin and especially in the winter time that's something that I I feel like it intensifies in the winter time. So, therefore because of that, I always lean towards very light coverage natural foundations, but sometimes you just want like a full face, full coverage, like a full more full coverage look, and I feel like I have found the perfect combo for that. So, this is something that I actually bought for the summertime, but it's the Dior Forever Skin Glow and their Dior Forever Skin Correct concealer here. The foundation I have in shade 2.5W, which is a little bit too dark for me right now. I did get it for the summertime or when I'm self-tanned, which right now I don't have any self-tanner on. And the concealer I have in shade 1N. But we're going to look past the color and we're still going to make it work. But the reason why I've been loving this combo so much is because it has a medium to full coverage finish and the concealer works beautifully with the foundation lately i've been struggling with my concealers either breaking up a little bit kind of creating a cake face or emphasizing dry patches like it's not as flawless as i want it to look and i feel like this combo here is just definitely it so one of the main reasons why your foundation might be breaking up or creating a cakey finish is because you might be using a let's say an oil-based foundation with a water-based um, concealer like you need to make sure that your concealer and foundation kind of have the same base and I feel like whatever whatever it is in these two I'm not 100% sure they work like a match made in heaven and I will show you guys let's just get right into it by the way this top is from H&M H&M has been killing it with the lace options these days so right now like I said I'm not self tanned it's the middle of winter what's well, not technically actually winter yet but it's about to be in like a day or two but point is I'm very light right now and fair so this foundation is not a perfect color match so don't come after me for that let's just focus on the finish I can still make this work and make it all come together using like powders and things like that but it's still not like you'll be able to see when you look at my hands you'll be like okay that's not exactly the best finish and I hear you I agree with you fully agree with you but we're gonna focus on the finish in today's video so I'm gonna use a brush to buff that into the skin it blends beautifully it does have a little bit of a scent to it I mean, look at that. That is just like so gorgeous. It covers well. Again, it's like medium. I would call this medium coverage. It's definitely not light and it's not like crazy full, but it is decent coverage. So I would say it's like a medium finish and it does not emphasize any dryness. It doesn't really settle into fine lines. And I was talking about the scent before I got distracted. It does have a little bit of a scent to it, but it goes away. Like I would say most prestige beauty brands have a scent when it comes to their products which I don't know why, but it doesn't linger. Same with the Lancome one. I love the Lancome one. I would say my top three favorite prestige premium beauty brand foundations are this, the Lancome Taunting Doll Ultra Care and Glow, not the original, the Care and Glow, and then Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk. I would say those three right there, and then Estee Lauder would probably be number four for me because my skin, I love it. It's definitely more full coverage, but my skin, it's a little too dry for it. But when it's not dry and it's working well, I feel like that's that's a great one as well. So those are probably like my top four that I have in my collection. And depending on what I'm in the mood for, sometimes, like I said, you want a full coverage foundation. Sometimes you want something super light. Sometimes you just want a CC cream. Sometimes you want a foundation essence. So I love having these things in my collection depending on what I'm in the mood for that day. I'm going to use my tools sponge here. This is the best sponge. I already used this. Like I said, it's my second time trying to make this video. So you will see that like my sponge and then this... It has product on it because I did use it today, but this sponge is so great because it's so squishy and soft. It literally feels like you're using your fingers. And I'm just going to go over and kind of melt that foundation into the skin. I will also add that the skincare portion is probably the most important because if you're not taking care of your skin or if your skin is really struggling, it's going to be hard 
to find product that sits beautifully on top of it but sometimes you can't help it and you have dryness and you have acne and stuff that you're dealing with and you still want to wear makeup so you just find products that work well for your skin and to go with that i'm going to use the dior forever skin correct concealer and again mine is in 1n and this combo here you guys is like a match they were literally made for each other but i'm just going to conceal like i usually do so a little bit here a bit here and a little bit here it's like a little there a little there the whole face you can use a brush i have this brush from enzo ken I got it on Amazon and it's amazing because it's tapered, it has like a little point and this works really well. I got this specifically for under eye concealer if you want like a full coverage look to your concealer. I'm actually going to use the sponge. This literally feels like you're using your fingers because this is a little bit on the thicker side when it comes to concealers and I have to be very careful with my under eyes otherwise if I use products that are too heavy or I cake them on my under eyes are going to look cakey and crepey. And I don't like that creepy look, but do you see that? And that is it for foundation and concealer. So you see how it looks healthy and glowy, and but it still has like medium coverage, pretty decent coverage. Like it's not super light, it's definitely medium coverage, but at the same time, it doesn't look really heavy and cakey. Like it still looks really, really good in my opinion, even with powder. I, in the wintertime, avoid powder a lot of times because it can really make my skin look even drier and emphasize dry patches or even create like creepy skin under the eyes. So what I have been doing for setting the under eyes because even though this is not sticky like really, I feel like setting the under eyes, it gives you like this airbrushed flawless finish that not setting your face will not give you so this is why i love setting my face but i have like a love-hate relationship because i have to be really careful so i have the slay the bake powder here blurring powder from gerard cosmetics and this one is pink as you can tell so it's going to really help to brighten the under eye and what i'm going to do is actually use my enzo ken concealer brush and i have a feeling this is not a new technique but i haven't really seen anyone do it i'm going to use this brush to set my under eye so i'm going to put a little bit grab a little bit of powder and then dust off the excess and then with a very very light hand I'm gonna go in well make sure that you don't have any creasing going on first so kind of tap it out with your finger and then very lightly use the brush to set that under eye just like this t-zone area right here so I'm gonna do that to this side and then also to the other eye okay then I'm also gonna do the lids just because I have a little bit of concealer there and I don't want it to move or crease. And then also like right here on the nose using this brush. And then for the under cheek area, I'm going to go in with a poof. I have this sponge from Real Techniques. I think it's called their Miracle Sponge, so it's double-sided. This is their orange sponge that most people know and use. And then you can flip this over. You can use either side. You can use this side or flip it over and you get like that soft velvety to use with the powder so this side you use with powders this one you use with um, like foundations and cream and liquid products and things like that using the powder side I'm gonna go ahead and dip that and grab a lot of the powder because we are gonna basically bake and I'm gonna apply it right along here in a straight line and then kind of go up the smile lines just a bit and then do the same exact thing to the other side and a little bit right here for bronzer i have the christian dior bronzer here i think this was limited edition i bought it through the dior website i signed up for the loyalty program and it is expensive i think this was like 50 something dollars or so i think i did a video on it if you're gonna buy any dior products i highly recommend signing up for their loyalty program it's completely free but you also can build up points and then they send you um like freebies for example when i reached a certain threshold i got like a dior lip gloss a serum thingy some perfumes like and it comes in like the cutest packaging ever so i would highly recommend buying it through the website and building up those points like might as well but i'm gonna grab some of this bronzer and stipple it onto my cheeks and this is like a really nice i have mine i think it's called tan bronze it's like a really nice yes yeah, tan bronze neutral with a little bit of warm in it. It's like not too intense, so it looks pretty natural. Okay, I'm gonna do a little bit of the nose on the forehead, and then we're gonna do a little bit on the neck to blend everything. 
Right, and then I'm just gonna dust this off using that same brush so it's not too intense. And that is literally it. I'm actually gonna grab some of that bronzer, apply it along here, and then a little bit on the brow bone, like above the crease just to create some depth to this lash look. For brows, I'm gonna use the new CoverGirl brow pencil. This one is in shade blonde, and I actually do like this pencil. I love the formula, I love the color. It's not warm toned at all. It's exactly the color that I would look for, but the pencil does break easily, is something that I noticed, but I do still like it. Like Even though it breaks on me here and there, I feel like it's just a really great product. So what I do when I do my brows is I will outline them first because my eyebrows are not the same shape. So I outline them to kind of create the same shape and then I'll go in and fill them in. For lips, I'm going to use my all-time favorite Christmas combo. This is the Urban Decay 24-7 Glide On Lip Pencil in shade Bad Blood. I actually have some remnants of it still even after washing my face to redo this video. It, like once it dries down I feel like it stays on and then I'm gonna use it in conjunction with the Maybelline vinyl liquid lip and this one is in shade wicked and I got both of these on Amazon this one went out of stock because there was I got it because of a video on Instagram reels and I feel like it is such a beautiful red with like bluish undertones to it but it's still it's not like super blue it's not the wicked one is definitely more blue but this one's like a nice, beautiful, deep red. It's just gorgeous. This is what the lip liner looks like on its own. It's this beautiful, beautiful red. And I'm gonna apply some of that liquid lipstick. If you watch my vlogmases, you'll see that I went on a hunt trying to find the perfect match and I was not able to. So this was kind of like the closest thing that I could find. I haven't looked at everything, obviously. I only bought a few products, but this one's pretty close. Look at that beautiful, beautiful red. And it does take a little bit of time to dry down. But once it does, it doesn't really transfer. It does start to come off like on the inside, but not too bad. Like it's not too bad. I would say it's actually a really good, affordable um, liquid lip from the drugstore. I really like this formula a lot. There's another close up of the makeup. Again, keep in mind that I am in front of a light. I'm actually going to show you guys in front of the window, but I feel like I'm able to achieve a full flawless face on my dry skin and it doesn't look bad. I actually found some natural sunlight. If you like showing it in natural sunlight, you can really see what it would look like if you were standing outside and talking to someone. And then here is without the light. Just so you guys can get different variations. This is like fish eye lens version, but just so you guys can get an idea. Again, everybody's skin is different and unique and you just wanna feel comfortable in your own skin. So actually, let me turn the light back on. Do you see what a difference this ring light makes? This is why, you know, when you're filming videos and you see things, I try to never use filters. I do have the Sony where it gives you like a soft skin finish filter. I'll use that if I'm doing like a lash video or something that doesn't focus on skin. But for the most part, as you look at my videos, you'll see like my skin is my skin, but even then I usually have like I'm in front of a window or something or using a light and that does add like an extra layer of brightness to the skin. But this combo right here, like I mentioned, I would actually feel comfortable wearing out in public and I wouldn't be, I wouldn't feel self-conscious about it. So I just really wanted to share. And with that said, I hope you all have a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And I hope to see you guys in future videos. Bye.